the Informed Consent Action Network has just won another lawsuit, this time against the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. As many of you know, the Informed Consent Action Network, my nonprofit, has already won lawsuits against the National Institute of Health, the FDA, and HHS, Health and Human Services, and now we add to that the CDC. What was this lawsuit about? Well, as many of you know, we watch the news all the time, and the CDC says that vaccines do not cause autism. It says that right on their website. And we hear all the time that thousands of studies have been done to disprove the vaccine autism link. Vaccines do not cause autism. The science around a purported link between these vaccines and autism was thoroughly debunked years ago. Massive evidence that there's no link between vaccines and autism. We're not sure as a scientific community what causes autism, but we know that vaccines do not. A mountain of scientific evidence with mountains of studies, or this has been thoroughly debunked. So at the Informed Consent Action Network, we wanted to see the proof of this. And specifically, we wanted the proof for the vaccines given in the first six months of life. Since autism is diagnosed starting at six months old, if vaccines have any relation, it would be in those first six vaccines. And since the CDC says that all vaccines don't cause autism, and there has been, you know, an immense amount of studies done to prove that, we simply wanted to see those studies. This started out with a Freedom of Information Act request, which is something we can do in America. We just asked the CDC, please provide the science that supports your claim. So here's what we asked for. All studies relied upon by CDC to claim that the DTaP vaccine does not cause autism. All studies relied upon by the CDC to claim that neither Endurex B nor Recombivax HB, which are hepatitis B vaccines, do not cause autism. All studies relied upon by the CDC to claim that Prevnar 13 does not cause autism, that the Hib vaccines do not cause autism, and that the IPV, the inactivated polio vaccine, does not cause autism. And then additionally, any studies that showed that the cumulative effect of these vaccines in the first six months of life does not cause autism. Well, they didn't want to answer that, and they fought us for months, so we ended up taking them to federal court, and we had to sue. Once we're in federal court, we asked the judge to tell the CDC to give us exactly what we requested, and the, so the CDC did. They gave us 20 studies. They could have given us 100. They could have given us 1,000. They could have given us the mountains of studies because they know we're serious and we want a serious answer, but they gave us their 20 studies. Let me show you exactly what those studies are so you can see what has taken place here. Here are the 20 studies, okay? Here is the problem with these studies. Remember, we asked about DTaP, Hib, Hep B, Prevnar 13, and the polio vaccine. Well, this first study is an MMR study. That's the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. We did not ask about the MMR vaccine. We asked about five other vaccines. This is irrelevant. This would be like saying we can prove that there's no peanut allergy by doing a study on almonds. A study on almonds does not prove that a child will not have a peanut allergy. Therefore, this study is absolutely irrelevant. All of these studies in yellow are studies about thimerosal, which is a mercury-containing ingredient that preserves vaccines. None of the vaccines we asked about has any thimerosal in it, so any study about thimerosal is irrelevant. And then these four studies in green were studies about the MMR vaccine and thimerosal. Therefore, of the 20 studies we were given, 18 of them have absolutely zero relevance to our question about DTaP, Hib, Hep B, Prevnar, and polio. That means that all that remains is these last two studies. Now, this first study right here, the adverse effects of vaccines, is not really a study. It's a review by the Institute of Medicine, some of the greatest minds in science in America. And in this review, they actually do ask about the DTaP vaccine. The question was, does the DTaP vaccine cause autism or is there proof that it doesn't cause autism? And when they investigated and looked all around the world for all the studies that existed, what they concluded was the evidence is inadequate to accept or reject a causal relationship between diphtheria toxoid, tetanus toxoid, or acellular pertussis containing vaccine and autism. Why can they not say it does or does not cause autism? Because no studies existed. So this study actually proves our point. No study in the world exists 
that can say and prove that the DTaP vaccine does not cause autism. So this one must be taken away. That leaves us with the final and last study. This is a study that looked at antigens in vaccines. Antigens being either the bacteria or the virus that's in the vaccine. And the question was, if there's more virus and more bacteria, does that make the vaccine more likely to cause autism? So they compared groups of kids that got a lot of vaccines, but not as many antigens, with a lot of vaccines with more antigens. And they determined that it made no difference in autism. But to prove my point, even in the conclusion, they say that this study does not prove that vaccines don't cause autism. Take a look at this. It can be argued that ASD with regression in which children usually lose development skills during the second year of life could be related to exposure in infancy, including vaccines. This study could not prove that vaccines don't cause autism. Therefore, this study is irrelevant too. So when the CDC was tasked with providing all of the science that proves that the vaccines in the first six months of life do not cause autism, they were able to provide zero studies that actually address our question. That means that this statement on the CDC website, vaccines do not cause autism, is not a statement of science, rather it's an advertising slogan. So here at the Informed Consent Action Network, we are speaking to you, Alex Azar, and the heads of the CDC and saying, it is time for you now to remove this voluntarily from your website because this statement is an abomination of science and it's an embarrassment to anyone that calls themselves a scientist. And if you do not take this down off of your website, then you can know that the Informed Consent Action Network and everybody that supports us will use every legal means necessary to hold you accountable.